Okay. This one, this one is my sequel to the uh, Batman vs. Superman discussion. This is where I don't talk about the salt. I'm, I'm really going to try. I'm like, I'm really going to try to not bring up any of the uh, negative reviews and, and negative viewpoints that people have that I find are just being fucking stupid and that sort of shit. I'm going to keep this one about what I thought about the actual movie, which is pretty much going to translate to what I enjoyed about the movie because there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing in the movie that I didn't like. So there's, like, there's nothing where that I looked at in this movie where I was like, Ooh. how about we start that sentence over? <laughs> there's nothing in the movie where I was just sitting there like, well, this is kind of stupid. I wouldn't mind if this went away. Like, nope, whole thing. I, you know, I, I got shocked a couple of times but it wasn't by things that are like seem really all that shocking. But I, I'll get I'll get to those when I get there. All right. The first note that I have is that the film gave Thomas and Martha more respect, and I really appreciate that. Uh, it 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 always comes off to me like. From the viewpoint of Bruce's, it always seemed as though he was just kind of looking up and he saw the devil take his family. But in this movie, if it feels like Bruce looked up and he saw his father and his mother fight and then fall and I think that's important I I think it's very cool and I think it's a very interesting take on that scene uh, my second note is the, the 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 big probably the biggest surprise in this film Aside from a thing about, uh, I almost called her that. Aside from the thing about Wonder Woman that I'll get to. Uh, and that is the Superman disrespect. Like, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with Superman as a character. I'm cool with Superman as a character, especially in this universe. I tend to find Superman's stories boring. But I don't have a problem with the character. But I had a little bit of a bone to pick with this version of Superman because this was a disrespectful motherfucker. He brought the disrespect. You know, Batman is doing his Batman shit in the Batmobile and this cat just stands there and lets his car bounce the fuck off of him and go flying into a wall and then he breaks the doors off like the disrespect and then he just stands there in his face tells him to retire like the balls you got to have to think you could just come into Gotham and tell Batman to stop saving people. You know, like, Superman doesn't do shit for Gotham. Like, as, as far as being on, like, on a regular basis, Superman doesn't do shit for Gotham at all. At all. He didn't do shit. He didn't care about Gotham. He didn't fucking live there. He doesn't protect people there. He doesn't put away bad guys there. He doesn't give a shit about Gotham. Batman is the only one, you know, that he didn't hire and that isn't Batwoman who's running around like, well, you know, and the cops who isn't running around trying to save this fucking place, you know? And 
This motherfucker just shows up to your shit, fucks your car up, tells you to retire, and then says, consider this mercy, and turns around and just, the disrespect, straight up disrespect even when they were fighting like when they were just starting to battle each other he fucking puts his hand on his chest and just shoves him just the disrespect of superman was so real in this movie he threw him around like it was nothing like and and it was because of that it was because of that that every time that man got an advantage. I was just fucking cheering and shaking in my seat. Cause I was like, "You, this fucker has earned every lick back he gets for the disrespect he has been showing through this entire fucking film. Like the way Batman drove back home after the disrespect just hitting all the lights on the way down the road, everything, not giving a fuck like that, just showed the rage that came from this dude's fucking disrespect to him. And it it was, it was one of the most, it was like the only thing that I found that was like out of character as far as Superman, because, I mean, he's kind of a dick in the books a little, a little, but he didn't, he wasn't just like straight up balls on the table, disrespectful like that. And I, I, I actually loved it because it gave me carte blanche to just be like, Batman needs to beat the fuck out of this dude for real. <sighs> oh, and um, my notes aren't going in any particular order. It was just the order that I uh, remembered shit. The fact that it opened with Thomas and Martha's death. Don't think I'm going in chronological order, all right? We already talked about the disrespect. Okay, okay. So, um, I did like the Martha name connection. And it's something that I never even put together. I, I didn't realize that there was, you know, Martha Kent and Martha Wayne and the word Martha would be important to the both of them. And that that was cool. That was cool. And just in case, oh, goodness, just in case it's not fully understood among everybody, uh, they didn't stop fighting because their parents' names are the same. They stopped fighting because Batman realized that if he killed Superman and allowed Martha to die, then he would essentially become the shooter, you know, in the alley that took his parents only for another person's parent, you know, so it it snapped him out of it, he's like, oh shit, you know, I need to be saving people instead of letting them die and that sort of shit, so... Um, yeah, my next note, Wonder Woman was insane, and I loved how it showed the strengths of the trio, and what I mean by that is when they were all, and they all came together and they fought Doomsday, um, they all did what they do. And it was really cool unless you're the type of person who wants Superman to be cool instead of wanting Superman to be Superman. You know, like when you think about their pasts and their upbringings and how they got to where they are as people, you think about the entire trinity of characters. Wonder Woman trained combatant with superpowers. Okay. Batman trained, incredibly trained mortal 
no superpowers. I, I don't know. I'm, I kind of think that Wonder Woman might be trained a little better. I don't know. That's kind of a toss up. But they, those two are trained. Um, Superman ain't trained in shit because punching works. And this is something that I think that people don't really get when it comes to Superman. Like that fight made perfect sense. Okay. Superman got his ass whooped because he was fighting something that was stronger than he was. And he's not skilled <laughs> because Superman punches things and the things go away. So that's all he knows. He knows how to punch things and he knows how to shoot eye beams. That's all he knows how to do because that's all he's ever had to do. You know, if he does, if, if punching you doesn't work, he punches you again and he keeps punching you until he wins. Like that's what he does. But if you come at him with the same, like, you know, if you come at him with more power than he has in the same style, he's still going to do the same shit. He's just going to get his ass whooped more. And that's what happened. Doomsday would catch him, throw him through a building. Doomsday, you know, like uh, uh, Superman would start an eye beam war. Doomsday would blast his eye beam back at him, send him flying off. You know, like it made sense because Superman is not a trained combatant. Okay. Wonder Woman. Fuck that. I'm taking the legs off this motherfucker. I'm cutting off wrists. You ain't finna grab me, son. I'm taking off wrists. I got this shield for a reason. You ain't about to hit me with no fucking beams. I ain't dealing with that. Like it, it made perfect sense because she is trained for combat. She got knocked the fuck across the damn stage area. And she was rolling around on the floor for, with a fucking smile on her face. Because she is a fucking warrior. And that's what she does. She fights. She is in her element when she is fighting. Batman, on the other hand, is like, this motherfucker can't touch me or I'm dead. So what does he do? He gets the fuck out. He dodges. He looks for the right position to get to. He evades. He sent that motherfucker flying into a building on his own power because he got out of the way. Like, this is this is what they could do. And then, you know, when Wonder Woman caught him with the lasso, and then Batman fully understood, yep, this is the chance. This is the time I can use this kryptonite. And then he did it, and that wore him down. And then Superman made the sacrificial play. You know, that is exactly what the three of them do. That That's what they do. It was perfect. It was wonderful. Batman fighting Superman was awesome because Superman had to pay for that disrespect. And then them all fighting Doomsday was wonderful because it showed who they were as characters. It was like character development in battle. It was awesome. Um... All right, what's what's the what's the next one? Oh, I said Doomsday worked, and he did. Uh, he was fine. He wasn't pretty. I've never thought Doomsday was pretty. Uh, if I had to change something, I would just I don't know. I guess make him bulkier. But my whole thing about Doomsday was that I don't think that that was actual doomsday I think that was like a pre-cooked doomsday you know like since we're fighting year two Superman and we're fighting well they never really state how I mean I guess Diana's really fucking established she's in black and white photos and Batman has been around forever, but it's a really, really young Superman. So if that's the case, like, I, I think that they gave him an undercooked doomsday. 
So in that sense, it makes sense that he is like thinner and not as menacing because I think that if Superman had been killed and Lex wasn't pushed, he would have let Doomsday cook more and Doomsday would have come out looking like this big hulking mass, like, you know, the Doomsday that we're used to seeing. So I think that him looking a little fucked up makes sense because I think he got called into the game early, you know. Um, oh, and his effects were fucking crazy, dude. Oh, shit. The red lightning was some of the fucking... I saw that shit and I was like, damn they need Marvel needs to learn this I don't like before you bring another storm like before you do storm again you need to learn how to make this shit because this is some of the most amazing lightning effects and it it's it was oh my goodness the eye candy of this movie in the battles good grief it was amazing um I said Affleck was amazing along with everyone else. And I genuinely mean that. I can't think of an actor I didn't like in their role. Not one. Uh, Like people are ragging on this Lex Luthor. I'm like, man, this is year one Lex. And this fucker masterminded the whole damn thing. Masterminded like Dude, the piss in the jar. Mastermind. Superman walks in a courthouse. He sets it. He makes it look like he fucking bombed that motherfucker. He shoot. You know, he has people get killed, and then right when Superman shows up, trying to get Lois back from the damn desert, and he just set that whole thing up. He sends shit to Bruce. He set that whole thing up. He's putting fucking bombs in wheelchairs. Like, this dude set up everything. And and why? Because he's, what, small? Because he talks a little weird? Now we're going to write him off as a bad Lex? Come on, man. Come on, man. It's a, it's a disarming mechanism. It's a disarming personality. That's that's what I think, at least. Uh, the dream sequences and visions were very well done and really opened up the characters. I mean, there's really nothing more for me to add to that. I genuinely believe that. Uh, I, I thought they were cool. I thought they were well done. They let us know what these characters were thinking. Like when Clark goes out to the snow and finds his pop, you know, like that sort of shit like that is important when you have these characters that are important, but can't really talk to each other. It lets you know what they're thinking without some bullshit monologue coming up like I was alone and I was thinking of a father. Like, that sort of shit just ain't necessary. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, I, yeah, I was talking about Lex. I love this being year one Lex. Scheming and brilliant, but not as desperate or powerful yet. Love the piss in the jar. Good introduction, right? Uh, next note, everything was explained and made sense. I genuinely believe that. Uh, I wasn't confused. Anything I was confused about was cleared up by the end. Uh, And I really enjoyed the ride. Uh, They really nailed Alfred's passive aggression. That has been a thing I've been waiting on for a while. Um, Michael Caine's Alfred made kind of snide remarks. But it wasn't passive aggression on the level 
of this Alfred. This was the first Alfred in a while that I believe they really nailed. Like they really nailed him with this one because it's like he's super useful. He's doing all this shit. He's piloting the bat. Oh, I don't know if I just got all that. But I was saying he's super useful. He's helping piloting the bat wing. He's doing all this shit from the lab. Well, not from the lab, but from the bat cave. And he's just being amazing. And at the same time, he's giving him shit for not having kids. You know, like it's it was just perfect Alfred shit to say. It it was it was great. It was great. I, I really liked uh Jeremy Irons' Alfred. I thought it was cool. Uh Wonder Woman's changes make a lot of sense to me as well, yeah. Like I've always found it illogical for Wonder Woman in Amazon from an island that has nothing to do with America to be flying around with fucking stars on her ass draped in the American flag colors like I never thought that made sense because like they always made it seem like she just came here looking like that and that's weird like there's no and why she always had a perfect American accent I think that her having an exotic accent and having a more muted look makes a lot more sense for the character. I think this version of Wonder Woman in a lot of ways is a lot more logical than the other Wonder Woman with the fucking stars and the red, white, and blue and shit. Like I not that I have a problem with that, but it never it was always an aspect of her character that didn't really make a lot of sense to me. You know? So I, I think they nailed that. Uh Oh, oh, the Batmobile is fucking amazing. To, to let it be known, I like that car in um, Arkham Knight. And now I wish they would just put in a fucking, like, just give me a patch that lets me take a car and throw the car at another car while I'm in the car. Like, can I can I do that? Can we put that in a game? Can can that just let that happen in a game at some point? Like, as a matter of fact, it don't even have to be a Batman game. Just let me put a wire on a car and drive in another car. And then just have that one just behind me just rolling, rolling, rolling. And then just throw that car into a whole other car. Like, that was amazing. That was, I need to be able to do that. Um, I like the Batwing's Gatling cannons. I thought that was fucking cool. I don't understand how it works at all, but I thought it was really fucking cool. That it would fly and then the cannons would be shooting continuously, but they'd be moving in a circle. I, I don't know how it works. I guess that's one element that I could be confused about. Technology. <laughs> but... As far as plot or anything, I wasn't confused. But I, I was a little... I was like, how does that work? I just... I thought it was awesome. Um, and... I... This... This was barely even... Like, I saw it. I absolutely saw it. But my wife... Just nailed this. Just nailed noticing this. Homeboy Bats, yo, goes straight up Arkham Knight on these motherfuckers. And it is, like, I, when I sat in the car to leave the theater, I was like, who the fuck sat down in front of Zack Snyder and fucking played Arkham Knight for this dude? I just, I wanted to know who the fuck did that. Because he either plays himself or somebody played it for him or he watched the shit on YouTube. Something like no. There were exact moves 
from Arkham Knight I saw in the fucking movie. I saw it. I was I was looking at the screen like, dude, I've done that. I've totally fucking done that. And it was so awesome. When Batman actually got to fighting people, it was some of the most amazing shit I've seen on film as far as a Batman fight scene. Batman fight scenes are always goofy in movies to me because it feels like the person isn't comfortable in the suit and they just trying to move around and it's awkward. This one, no. This was Arkham Knight done in a cut scene, put in a movie. Like that that's what this was and it was so fucking amazing. Uh it it just it made me want to come home and play the game. It 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 truly did. It was great. It was fucking great. Um, and my last note is that I loved how any potential kills Batman were Batman got were indirect by him causing explosions. And I do like that. A lot of people are gonna say, No, it's no excuse. Batman cannot kill people. No, 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 will not have it. And I get that mentality. I do. But this is an old Batman that is based on the Frank Miller Batman. And Frank Miller himself said, my Batman kills people. And the reason his Batman kills people, I think, is because he is a pretty old man and he has had enough of the shit. And he has watched his law lead to the death of of loved ones I think that all they really needed to do was just show the remains the outfit of that Robin with the 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 taunt sprayed on it to him to understand okay this is why he kills people you know, even indirectly, like he's not even trying, like he's not going out of his way to kill anybody. Like he's not snapping necks and shooting people in the face. He's just not pulling punches anymore. He's basically Go Key from Street Fighter. Like Go Key will kick through a boat full of people if they happen to be where he's training. You need to stay the fuck out of where he's training. But he ain't about to go and find a boat and kick through the bitch because it's a boat. Like he ain't that crazy. Like he ain't crazy on that level. It's just stay the fuck out of where he is. You know, you know, it, it, it's a practical kind of thing that can at times lead to death. Just you know, it's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I I really. Really dug this movie. Definite must buy whenever it comes out on Blu-ray. Um, I mean, what more can I say? It it was just it was an amazing experience. I I fully plan on seeing it again multiple times. It was really good shit, and I think that if you're into this sort of thing just don't deny yourself the pleasure and just have fun um that being said thank you for listening thank you for going on this journey with me my very very first two-parter episode series thingy uh doing a lot of uh, experiments on this thing and um, I'm liking where it's been I'm liking where it's going so uh, that being said um, that's that's it <laughs> I'm tired I'm going to bed you all have a good whatever the hell you're in and I'll see you next time <laughs>